12 2018 corporate development committee meeting attendance has been taken knowing that uh, councillor chambers will not be here tonight uh, mayor eddie will not be here uh, as well um approval of the agenda please there is no addendums councillor coleman councillor miller anyone like to add anything to the uh, uh, agenda seeing none all oh councillor miller one item under other business please okay anyone else seeing none all in favor opposed carried uh, please declare pecuniary interest at the time if required uh, delegations petitions and presentations mr brian Sattel, request for support petition to expand natural gas line along county highway 54 sir did you want to come up to the podium and speak to that thank you Just please state your name and your address. Yep. Thank uh, you. Yeah, my name is Brian Zettel. I live on um, County Road 54 at uh, 288. I'm here to present council a petition I've gathered from residents along Highway 54, east of County Road 18. Um, we are seeking an extension of the natural gas line east of County Road 18 to serve 16 or more homes along Highway 54. 16 of the 18 residents I spoke to signed the petition and are eager to connect to the natural grass grid. Many of the residents are currently using propane, oil, electricity, or wood. As we know, these are very expensive sources of home heating and water heating with unpredictable energy prices. The residents were approached by Union Gas, I think it was around 2014, to measure response for connectivity. I followed up shortly after my response and was told there was very little interest and gas would not be provided. With the petition you have in your hand, you will see an petition. I contacted Brian Coleman to discuss this and he asked if I could present this here tonight. On September 18th, uh, Premier Doug Ford announced at the international plowing match that the province would like to expand natural gas to rural and northern Ontario. Doug and Andrea Horvath agreed, which is unusual. Um, there would be legislation forthcoming for a partnership with private gas distributors to accommodate the expansion. In the meantime, we are presenting this to Council to see how you can help us get this expansion completed. The success of our gas expansion would have a positive effect on our environment and likely increase the property values of the area, which would in turn increase tax revenue to the county. Um, I'm asking tonight how council could help us achieve this goal and if it would be best to go to the province as they were the ones who spoke up regarding um, the expansion. Um, I'm joined by some of the residents who signed the petition. Um, who would like to speak on this matter. Um, Tanya Martin is my next door neighbor and she's um, had two years with propane and she's here to tell us how that went. Committee, would you uh, allow this at this time? Thank you. Thanks. Hi everybody, I'm Tanya Martin. I live at 282 Highway 54. I just wanted to enter some figures into the record. We moved two years ago into our current home. Uh, the home that we moved from was hooked up to Union Gas, and we were on monthly billing. In 2014, we had a monthly bill of $101, and in 2015, that was reduced to $77 monthly. When we moved to our current home, we have propane heat, and in 2017, after uh, the year was done, our annual monthly costs were approximately $237, so about three times what we were paying in the city. And we just switched to monthly billing now, and we are currently paying $350 a month, so almost five times what we paid when we were hooked up to Union Gas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members of committee, do you have any questions? Councillor Pierce, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, if I could, uh, if, was it Brian? Can I get yes. Brian to come back up? The question was for him. 
You had mentioned that, um, I believe you said you had 16 of the 18 people that you went around to sign the petition? That's correct. Any reason why the other two didn't? Um, one of them is a large farm, and he just hooked up to oil and wasn't willing to switch to gas. That's uh, Dean Featherson's property across from me. The other one was a house at the very end of the street. Um, it's, no, it's not at the end. It's part ways down. It's a very small house, and I and I believe they they burn wood, and they weren't interested in changing as well. They were they were not. They didn't say why. They just didn't want. No, to. but they see a lot of wood piled up there, and it's a very small house, so I think they're comfortable with their heating uh, the way it is. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Simons, and then Councillor Miller, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the presenter. Have you approached your MPP regarding this matter? I have not yet. Because this is a provincial. I believe it's a provincial matter. I'm not for certain sure, but. I think it is. Uh, my <clears throat> first step was to approach here and then uh, get your opinion and we might go from there. Okay, thank you. Great. But I Councilor think you Miller. should be approaching your MPP. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, three to the presenter. Just a quick question to Brian. Um, I got a question for Tanya too. Uh, you're not aware of any uh, programs going on now where they are expanding it, are you? I'm not, no. Um, uh, just what, what Premier Doug Ford said at the plowing okay. match it was. Okay, because um, yeah, because there was a program. It was oversubscribed. It was out a couple of years ago. But uh, I, I think I think we as a council could maybe do a little more lobbying. And uh, question for Tanya: What what year was your house built? Um, I believe our house is approximately thirty years old. Okay, um, I think yeah, I think I can help you with that. But okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Councillor Gower, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the delegation. Um, I am aware that Union Gas did bring gas through 54 on the uh, Six Nations Reserve. And I'm not sure how many customers they served with that build recently, but um, I was surprised that there was no when I heard about it, that there was no um, information coming from Six Nations to Brant County to ask if we would consider extending through to the village of Onondaga, which would have brought it that much closer to you. Mm -hmm. um, do you know where the closest connection for Union Gas is out your way? Is it on Blossom Ave? It's at um, County Road 18. Sorry? It's at County Road 18. It runs uh, just past Highway 54 on County Road 18. So there's gas all along County Road 18? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, or maybe Brian's disagreeing. So it's not a big extension, they just have to come down No, the there is one um, spot between Duran's and County Road 18, which is a fairly long stretch. Um, I'm gonna say it's probably a good two, 300 meters where um, there would be no nobody connected at that point. But once it gets beyond that, there's the, the 16 of the 18 residents that I did talk to that are all interested in that. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Coleman, please. Just, just to clarify that, Councillor Coward, 18 is not all natural gas, it's about 500 feet down from 54 hours. So would that come up uh, Blossom Ave? It comes Old Blossom Ave? Okay. So that's clarified. Any other questions? Any other questions by committee? Thank you, sir. Yeah. That is the only item on uh, delegations. How would committee like to deal with this? Councillor Coleman, please. like to add to it certainly Mr. Chair. I think we we should uh, send a letter to the office of the premier a copy to go to our MPP here in Brent in Brantford Brant in Wilbama I think we should also get ourselves on as a delegation at both Roma and good roads and to speak to the proper minister at 
one or both of those conferences coming up early in 2019. But I think for right now, we need to uh, send a letter to the office of the Premier with a copy to our MPP here in Brantford Brant. Okay. Councilor Miller? Um, no, I, yeah, no, I support it. Um, I think it's a great idea. I think we do need to do maybe a little more lobbying. Um, so because we have that uh, hydroelectric dam I'd like to see in Paris. Um, so I, I was going to request a delegation with the Minister of, the, Minister of, Minister of Energy, I guess is what it would be. Um, could we also, um, Councillor Wheat mentioned some people to, to send a letter to. Could we CC score as well and maybe ask for their support? Because I know a lot of, a lot of them are... Um, they're starting with the same issues, trying to get gas out to the rural areas. So I think I think it'd be nice if we had maybe a concerted uh, approach to this, um, because give them credit, they are good at lobbying, and uh, like I say, it's one of the issues they've been uh, struggling with as well. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've wordsmithed something there for that. Yep. Yes, please. that County of Brant Council support the expansion of natural gas in rural areas and encourages the provincial government to move forward with this partnership. Uh, that a letter be sent to the Office of the Premier, the constituent MPPs to this effect and copy to SCORE, the South Central Ontario region. And that delegation be sought at the upcoming OCRA and Roma conferences uh, with the appropriate ministers. Members of committee, are you okay with that? Any other questions or concerns? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Adoptions of the previous minutes meetings. Minute meeting minutes from October 10th. Councillor Pierce, Councillor Gatward. Concerns or questions? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? And there are no business arising from the minutes. I don't see. Moving on to consent items. There is none. Consent items to be approved. Consent items to be received. We have four items to be received. Councillor Schmidt, Councillor Pierce, questions on either or any of those items? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Committee reports uh, 8A. Community Improvement Plan Committee Report, November the 8th. Mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Simons. Councillor Gatward. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, staff reports, Corporate Services, General Manager's update, please. Ms. Hewitt. Good evening, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, just letting you know that we're planning on going to market in the new year for employee benefits. And we are also looking at outsourcing the printing and mailing of tax bills uh, instead of doing that internally going forward. And we are working through the changes uh, to Bill 148, the Fair Workplaces Better Jobs Act, much of which has been replaced with Bill 47, the Making Ontario Open for Business Act. So that's causing us a little bit of grief, but we're getting through it. Uh, and the RFP for the Burford Reno has um, been extended to November 19th. Thank you, Ms. Hewitt. Any questions, comments? Councillor Miller, please. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I threw to General Manager of Corporate Services. Um, the election that we just had, th that's your department? Yes, through the clerks? Uh, that used to be, but through um, reorganization, the clerks is now under the CAO's office. Oh, okay. I'll finish it anyways, because <laughs> I brought it up. Um, I just want to say it's, it was, it, they did a nice job anyways. Um, not as entertaining as what's going on in Broward County, Florida, but they did a nice job. And the only thing I wanted to mention was that uh, at uh, accessibility, we talked about it today. <coughs> and uh, the one thing... I, I never thought about it till afterwards was um, we have to fill in this little box, you know, and uh, I guess a lot of seniors have trouble filling in that little box and uh, there's quite a few people that have uh, fine motor uh, problems with their fine motor skills and stuff like that. So that, that was the feedback from um, 
the accessibility group. And I know in Norfolk, um, they had the same system, I guess, where you could color in the little box or you could just put an X and their machine would read it. So um, not, not, not a criticism, but just something that uh, we should maybe just be aware of for the next time out. So, And uh, I'll remember that the clerks are under the CAO. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Councillor Pierce, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, um, just a question about the Burford RFP. Are we extending it because we haven't received any, or are we send, extending it to receive more? I'm just trying to understand. We are extending it because we've had uh, numerous questions come in um, more than once. So we keep issuing addendums with answers to the questions. And part of those uh, questions have been a request to extend it. So we have agreed to do that. OK, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hewitt. Moving on to operations, general manager's update, please. Mr. Walton. Good evening, through the chair to uh, committee. Um, just a few things here. Um, we got some good news last week. Our uh, application to the National Disaster Mitigation Plan for the Paris Flood Control, the um, review of that application by the province has been completed and it has been forwarded on the federal government for, for approval of that. So that's uh, very good news. It means we've got a fully completed application which has been forwarded on for a decision on the, on the, on the funding. Um, our roundabout at Rest Acres Road and um, Powerline Road is, is the construction now is, is proceeding um, and uh, curbs being poured uh, this week and we fully expect the completion of it and being operational before winter, but that winter, I guess, could come soon. Um, but anyways, <laughs> in this construction season, this construction season. And I'm very pleased to announce that uh, Mark Eby is our new Director of Infrastructure Services, and he started working at the county last week, and for those of you on Public Works Committee, you should see him tomorrow morning at the meeting. And that's all I have to report. Thank you, Mr. Wall. Uh, Councillor Pearson, Councillor Simons. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. So um, <clears throat> in regards to the Powerline Road, Rest Acres Road uh, roundabout, fantastic. Yeah, everybody can see, <clears throat> excuse me, what's going on there. So I just wanted to, on the record here, state that that is in <coughs> fact a two-lane roundabout, correct? I've had several calls so. telling me that it's only going to be a one-lane roundabout, and I said two. my understanding is it's a two-lane roundabout. Through the Chair of Committee, it will be a two-lane roundabout for this um, winter season when you only have the two lanes or two lane roads either side of it it'll probably be painted up this winter until it's the, until the final asphalt's on next year as a one lane but it is built as a two at the width of a two lane roundabout because next year the project which is going to happen is going to make there's things happening anyway so that's great thank you it, it, it's probably really hard to tell how wide it's going to be they've just laid out the curb right now and are getting ready to pour that so it's really hard to tell what the final um, layout is going to be. But yes, it is. It, it's going to be a four lane road, and that is a two lane roundabout. Councillor Simons, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the presenter. Um, the study at Grand River Street North, um, mm. do you have any indications at all when it will be complete? And will there be a public process that the public will be able to attend the final um, results of the study? Yes, through, through the chair to. Uh, to the committee, um, there will be a public meeting in 2019 before it's completed. Um, I don't think we have the, the date set for that yet. And then the completion of that will follow that out, so it'll be completed by next spring. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gatward and Councillor Coleman, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to um, the general manager. Um, when we were Speaking about the roundabout area, previously the lights were out um, that were managed by Energy Plus. Um, I noticed in the middle they had some portable lights. Um, are they because Energy Plus haven't been able to get their lights working? Or when will that be fully lit as it should be? Thank you. Could you actually address the microphone and not directly to the presenter, please? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty close. I'm surprised you couldn't hear me. So, um, would you like me to repeat the question? Maybe those people in the back, we have some incoming counselors here. 
Could everyone hear me back there? Yeah, they could hear me fine, Councillor Wee. I know I had my head turned towards the general manager, but I was speaking in the mic. Enough, please. Thank you. Mr. Walton, could you answer that question, please? Um, through the chair of the committee. Um, so it's, it's difficult when you're working on a construction project like this to have everything perfect during the construction. So there's going to be, I believe, 12 lights at this intersection when it's com fully completed. But the intersection is being made so much bigger that even if we put those lights in ahead of time, they wouldn't really light where people are driving right now. And I believe there was some talk about whether the existing lights were working or not during the construction. And I believe they actually were, but they're so far outside of where the intersection is right now, it doesn't actually light it. So after some uh, um, concerns were brought forward and some, um, 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 some of the changes in the construction there and the changes in, in how we had the barrels where we did have the temporary lighting put up as a temporary um, situation until um, we get further along. So yeah, there's, I believe it's a, at least 12 lights that are going up in there and they will be installed in this construction season as well. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Councillor Coleman, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for those that are not going to be at Public Works tomorrow, I would like the general manager to report on how good they did a job of negotiating for the reduction in the price of the airport elevated tank, because not everybody knows that. No way. Through the chair of the committee. Um, so there were two contracts um, for the elevated tank at the airport water system and then for the facility at the airport water system. Um, I don't have the report right in front of me, but I believe the number was 1.35 million rounded the, that we secured in, uh, in cost savings. Um, there, there's a few ways that we made that happen. Uh, probably the best things that happened was we sat down with a, a group which included the, the low bidder, our consultant and our operations staff and uh, worked through some of the where cost savings could happen and, um, and that got some of them the cost savings um, um, and um, then talking to our operations staff about some things that we could uh, that maybe weren't necessities for the project and we could live with a little some things a little different and um, I think that we had we've got all the success that we're going to have in reducing the costs on that project thank you very much uh, Councillor Simons please thank you Mr. Chair I have one more question if I may um, <clears throat> this is Watts Pond Road um, has it been completed and if it has, when will the alternate route signs be removed off of Silver Street and put onto the new Watts Pond Road? Through, through the chair to, um, to the committee. Um, Watts Pond Road is nearly completed. It is paved and there are some final um, touch up things being done uh, um, um, as we speak. Um, the actual changing the signs is a little bit more complicated than that. If we're going to sign it as a truck road or whatever, I believe that that does require um, reports to come forward to uh, to committee and council for that to happen. Um, so there, there's more um, paperwork to be done before something like that may happen, and uh, that that will follow. It will be done in the near future because I've had many complaints about it, and they want to know when it's going to happen. So I've said, well, I'll find out if I can. So I'm bringing it forward tonight. And hopefully in the near future, that will be done. So, yeah. so okay. staff, uh, thank Councilor you. staff will bring a report back to committee. Committee then would have to initiate the bylaw, approve it, and then uh, would have to work that way. This, can, I, can I have one more thing? And yep. this is in all the discussions about um, the Class EA for Grand River Street North and whatever, the whole issue of diverting traffic out of this area is part of that, and that will be discussed as part of that report too. So I, I believe that this will follow out of that study. Seeing no more questions, thank you, Mr. Walton, for the report. I appreciate it. Uh, Committee of Protective, uh, Community and Protective Services, please, Ms. Stevenson. Uh, good evening. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. I um, have a few updates for committee. This past weekend, 5,855 visitors attended the Syllabs Community Center as part of the Christmas in Paris event. I think those were some record-breaking numbers. And the event overall, I'm hearing, was a big success, thanks in part to the contributions of our staff there. 
Uh, just over a week ago, staff from several departments participated in an emergency management training day and mock exercise to ensure that the municipality is prepared in the event of an emergency. The construction tender for the fire halls has closed and is currently under analysis by the architect with a report coming to council later this month. And the construction tender for the OPP facility closes tomorrow. Uh, later this month, on November 30th, the county will have 16 new volunteer firefighters officially graduate from the recruit class program. Also later this month, four of our paramedics will receive the Governor General's Emergency Medical Service Exemplary Medal. Paramedics Wayne Buckley, Kevin Robinson, Mark Smith, and Mike Silverthorne will be recognized for over 20 years of exemplary pre-hospital medical service. Uh, the deadline for nominations to the 5th Annual 2019 County of Grant Sports Hall of Fame is November 30th, and nomination forms are available on the county website. Accessibility services in partnership with the Canadian Deaf Blind Association will be offering a special visit with Santa for children who require a sensory sensitive environment, and this event takes place uh, December 8th in Paris at the Canadian Deaf Blind Association. And community services staff has joined forces with the library to offer mobile services in Onondaga on Thursday evenings. In addition to library services, recreational activities will be offered to the community on scheduled dates featuring various activities. And that was all. Thank you. Any questions? Ms. Stevenson? Thank you very much. Development Services General Manager's update, please. Mr. Bomponi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a few things. Um, now that we've had this site alteration bylaw uh, in place for a few months, uh, I've had discussions with the lock rating technologists uh, that we've hired who came in from Skugog, uh, as well as uh, Don Cunningham, Manager of Development Engineering Review. Uh, and we sort of expected that we'd be making some changes to the bylaw, pricing, the uh, permitting fees, and things like that. Um, now that it's in place, we've had a chance to feel it out a bit. Uh, we're anticipating bringing uh, some amendments to that bylaw and some of the um, requirements for when permits are required and aren't. Uh, probably within around January or February, we're looking at. Um, and um, uh, the one thing we have to also keep in mind is that uh, with the site alteration bylaw, that component of it, a lot of it is just to deal with some of the issues that we had with Phil coming in from other municipalities, from the province, such as the MTO uh, work that had been done, and that in, in many of these cases on these bigger projects, uh, it's actually a source of revenue for people who are actually collecting the fill. So they're being paid to take the fill in. So that's one issue. The other one, when you look at the other, other extreme, which would be things like pools and um, and sheds you get into smaller things like this not as big an issue so we're looking at how we can best handle that and we're going to fine-tune it and bring that back to committee and council for endorsement and consideration so um, the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, was just to and I don't I hope this is okay I haven't checked with the CAO just to tell you about the county solicitor and certainly the um, experiences that our department has had since uh, they've been brought on and this was a position that was brought in at the urging of the CAO uh, certainly our staff have 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 experienced uh, a significant amount of benefit from this we meet regularly from with meetings with the solicitor um, we get a lot of great feedback on on some of our agreements and on some of the, the technical issues that we are handling in, uh, internally and also what you're going to be experiencing probably in the next little while is the solicitor is going to be taking on more and more, if not all of the appeals that are going to the appeal boards. Uh, we were farming a lot of that out to a, a solicitor, Nancy, everybody knows uh, Nancy Smith, who did a great job. Um, but this stuff is going to be handled in, in house more and more, and you're going to be seeing more and more of that happening in the near future. Um, so we are certainly experiencing some benefits. Certainly I'm meeting with her next week to talk about our signs, because we're bringing out the new signs that we're proposing, making sure the content meets the uh, requirements of the Planning Act. Uh, notices I sent her, we're looking at trying to fine tune our notices to make them simplified and easier to read. Legal jargon is certainly, in, and planning jargon, 
is something that can be overwhelming. It's almost like a different language for many people. So we're looking at ways we can do this to try to encourage more people to come in. So that's some of the stuff we're working on with the solicitor. And certainly having somebody in the house has been a great benefit for us. Um, and the other thing that you may see if you come into our offices, you're seeing a, a couple of people working on a lot of our filing. Um, there's a lot of boxes that are filled out here. And what we are doing is we're digitizing our property files. Um, we're, we've had many meetings with um, the scanning company that is doing it for us, which is Xerox, making sure that the uh, files are true copies of, uh, that can be used um, in legal proceedings if we need to. But there's a whole lot of information that we store in a room that we never look at. Um, and I think we've got, we're estimating we've got somewhere between 17 and 18,000 properties right now, property files. Probably somewhere around 100 to 150,000 pieces of paper total that are all being scanned. And, um, and that's being worked on right now, so you're going to be seeing some activity. It's kind of messy in the back here with a bunch of boxes coming and going. Uh, but we're working on that to free up some space. But also to, um, by digitizing these, these property files, it gives more immediate access um, to a greater number of people. For instance, our legal department would be contacting us for information for our property files. Now they all have to do is just do a search, and they can pop up the information is right there. Um, and that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Pomponi. Any questions for Mr. Pomponi? Concerns? Councillor Gatward, please. Thank you, Mr. Um, Chairman. Through you to um, the general manager, I was pleased to see that we hired a GIS coordinator. Mm -hmm. And um, is that person able to work with the GPS systems? The reason I'm asking is during the election process, I found out that GPS is sending trucks down a lot of our county roads where they shouldn't be going. And I'm wondering if there's any way we can communicate with the GPS people to get them to make changes. Uh our department, the only reason we deal with GPS with, uh, within development services for our building inspectors, and that's done more for tracking of vehicles and for insurance purposes if there's an accident, things like that. I'm not quite familiar with the circumstances that you were talking about. We can look into that. I, uh, the GPS units are trackers. They aren't, um, my understanding is that they're not um, directional. They don't give suggestions. There might be other, other mapping that does that, such as Google Maps, but ours are meant at least for our division, it's meant more for tracking where the vehicles are for insurance purposes. Well, I know of two different cases where this has happened in mm -hmm. different roads, so thank you. I, sure, I, I can discuss it further with you later. Sure, that'd be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Pomponi. Okay. Uh, moving along to economic development and strategic investment, general manager's update, Ms. Newton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, staff have largely been working on uh, wrapping up um, our current studies, including the economic development strategy. Um, we've had an, a, a great feedback and participation from the community. Um, so we're working on compiling all of that data and working towards um, a final draft that will be presented. Um, just some, some good news points of interest as we move towards year-end reporting and, and looking at what we've done over the last year. Um, as some of you know, I've been a big proponent of um, getting better metrics in place, specifically for, for economic development and tourism. And while we don't have a lot of uh, baseline historical data, I can tell you year over year, we've seen roughly a 40% uh, increase, and should may be of interest to the committee in, in light of the delegation that we heard tonight, that SCORE um, did go on October 31st um, to speak um, to the general government um, at, Ms. at Minister McNaughton's office on his proposed Bill 32, Access to Natural Gas, as part of their advocacy efforts, and Melissa Connor, um, our communications supervisor, um, did attend with SCORE as staff support on that. If any of the council members would like to see notes on that visit, I'm happy to share them. Thank you, Ms. Newton. Any questions, comments? Councillor Miller, please. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, three to Ms. Three, Mr. Chair. Could you put that in our Friday file? I haven't received them yet from SCORE, but certainly as soon as I do, I can include them. 
Okay. I, I think I think this is something that's going to keep coming up and up. So it'd be nice if we had a little history on what what's what efforts have gone forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Newton. Uh, Office of the Chief Administrative Officer. There is a recommendation there. Uh, CD 18-101, Adidas Joint Venture Solar Project. Mover, we have a mover, Councilor Coleman. Seconder. Seconder, Councilor Wheat. Comments or questions? Councilor Miller, please. Uh, two, two questions, Mr. Chair. Um, first one is the Green Energy Accord was entered into with Six Nations of the Grand River. Um, who's Grand River Development Corporation? <laughs> Mr. Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and it should be um, just let me Six Nations of the Grand River Development Corporation. So, uh, not too long after we uh, we started the first project, the uh, the BGI um, retail uh, joint venture project, Six Nations, uh, and actually using some advice from from myself based on our experience in setting up our own corporation, set up a, a holding corporation to hold all of their green energy assets because they have quite a few of them. That's so it is a wholly owned subsidiary of Six Nations of the Grand River Band Council. Okay. Um, so it has a uh, it has a board of directors comprised of community members and members of Six Nations Council. Uh, Matt Jamison, who uh, was formerly the economic yeah. development officer for Six Nations of the Grand River, Grand River, is their CEO. So all of our joint ventures with Six Nations are with the Development Corporation, and all the bylaws in the past have been with that that organization. So. Okay. That I wasn't clear on that. Okay. Second question. Um, in the financial implications, you say this uh, our investment will represents an annual return of six point seven percent. And then, if I look at the Six Nations return, it's nine point one eight nine percent. What what's why is there almost a Three percent difference there. Sure, sure, Mr. Chair. So our actual, our gross return on investment is, I think, about eleven percent. The six point seven is after financing. So Six Nations, their gross uh, take on the on the convertible loan would be nine point seven percent. Then they'll have to to pay their financing costs off that. So I don't know what their financing looks like, but yeah, if if you take the uh, basically the the net or the gross revenue and divide it by the by by the the, uh, the the cost it works out. I think it's about 11 11 percent and change. Um, but after we we um, we discharge our financing obligations, then it comes down to 6.7 percent. Still, a very good investment. Any other questions? Councilor Gatward, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, when I read this, I had some concerns because the initial application that included Six Nations, Adidas and us, it was turned down. The second application with just us and Adidas was approved. And so now we are trying to fit another party into this agreement with this convertible loan agreement. And we're doing it in a different way and I'm not sure I agree with it. I I understand they're going to loan us the hundred and ninety some odd thousand dollars. Does BME have that much money to loan? How? Where is? I mean, I, I guess you just said you don't know where the money's coming from. Their their financing is coming from from their development corporation, which is their holding company, and. In the agreement, when I read it, it said that they could transfer their, I guess, their shares or their 15% to anyone. Is that correct? Mr. Bradley? Through you, Mr. Chair, certainly any, any partnership is transferable uh, based on the terms of any reasonable partnership agreement. Um, so I, 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 I recall the, uh, the, the they, they could, um, just like we could sell out, we have partnership agreements as well. And I believe that the uh, 
the um, joint venture agreements for all of our joint venture projects say after a certain point of time we could transfer the interest to another party if we decided we didn't want to be in that business anymore uh, we could we could sell it and that's so usually any any joint venture agreement would have a, a term where you're expected to hold your interest in the venture but only to a reasonable extent and after that amount of time five years ten years perhaps you would be allowed to to transfer it transfer you didn't want to mm -hmm. be in that business anymore you need to raise capital etc cetera, etc cetera. those are that's 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 normal business business, I, I believe, in my opinion. So, um, so, so the question is, um, I think the, the, the initial question was, it, it seems like a, like a different a di a departure from what was originally planned. And, and I would agree with that. And I think my report quite clearly says that. And it explains why we got here. And, and the, 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 the quick answer why we got here is that the, the, green, the green Energy Accord was based on the original FIT rules. Mm -hmm. And then the FIT program changed. And we had to kind of evolve our approach as the FIT program changed to continue to fulfill the Green Energy Accord. So in this case, we're, we're using a convertible loan to, uh, to, to fulfill the original terms of the, uh, of the Green Energy Accord. Uh, the Six Nations will loan us money to fulfill their part of the, 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 the principal partnership. And then after five years, that loan will convert to equity, and we basically get to the same place we originally wanted to. I, what I can say, frank, quite frankly, is Six Nations would much rather have an equity um, uh, interest in this project, not a debt interest, interest in this project. Most good businesses want equity on their balance sheet, not loan, loan receivable on their balance sheet. So, um, but but this, this is the best we could come up with to meet the terms of the original Green Energy Accord. To, uh, to, to meet six, interests, six Nations' interests, to meet our interests, uh, to meet Adidas's interests. Everyone is in agreement, all the parties, at least at the, their staff levels, are all in agreement with this. Uh, this agreement has been to uh, the Six Nations Development Corporation Board and been approved. So uh, I think uh, County Council is the last stop for, for these, uh, this suite of agreements. So. I, I, I guess I was just thinking about the recent article that said they had a $2 million surplus, and I'm thinking, we don't have those kind of surpluses in Brant. Maybe we don't need to do this agreement. But if it's going to cause an issue with the accord, then I guess we need to go forward. But it just seems to me that, um, you know, if the province didn't approve it, now we're doing it in a different way. I'm not sure that that's what we should be doing, I guess. That's my concern. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none. Thank you. Um, we'll vote now on the recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, Chief Administrative Officer's update, please. Mr. Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, a few items and then a little bit of a statement to make at, at the end. Uh, the Health Hub, I just want to clarify one thing, the Brant Community Health Hub. I think there is a bit of confusion. Uh, some folks are calling, or some people are calling the, um, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the project that's going on in the old Brant County Power Building, the Health Hub. So just for clarification, the family health team is temporarily moving into the old Brant County Power offices uh, because they are exiting the Willett Hospital. Uh, that is not the Health Hub project that we've all been talking about. The Health Hub project is a different project that's scheduled to be constructed by the county across the road. So I just, just wanted to make that clarification. Um, on that project, that county project across the road, uh, as per the uh, direction from Council last month, I am now meeting with all of the various partners. I've had about six meetings so far, and I've got another 10 uh, going forward over the next couple of weeks. Very productive meetings. Uh, I think a very good vibe with the potential partners. And generally, I continue as I go through these meetings to be more optimistic about this project. I think there's going to be a, a good suite of partners occupying that building, providing a very good range of services for uh, members of the community. So, uh, We are uh, bringing our orientation program for the uh, council elect together. And it starts next week with, a, uh, with what we're calling an education session with uh, Fred Dean and Nigel Bellchamber, two of the premier um, experts on municipal governance here in Ontario. So. We're going to be hosting that as more of a classroom session as opposed to a council meeting or a typical council education session. Mr. Dean and Mr. Bell Chambers will be the hosts. Um, I think uh, I would hope that the that staff will be able to participate as well because all of us have lots to learn from these two individuals. Getting them in, this, in, the, in a room for four hours I think is a very unique opportunity and there's uh, lots we can all learn. So looking forward to that. 
I just uh, would like to, and Councillor uh, Miller already brought it up, but uh, give some comments to the clerk's department for a very successful uh, 2018 municipal election. I think most of us don't appreciate just how much work is involved in pulling that off. Uh, it becomes a full-time job for the clerk, an additional full-time job for the clerk for about a five-month period. But we don't do it often enough for us to upstaff. It's almost impossible to upstaff. And municipal clerks all across the province really have to step up and, uh, and run these elections every four years. I think ours went off uh, really without a hitch. A few minor things that we'll continue to follow up on, but generally I think uh, well done to the clerk's office and her team for, for pulling that off. A senior management team is doing its first review of the 2019 budget uh, on Monday. So lots of staff have been busy. Our budget is a bit delayed this year, which gives us a little bit of breathing room. So we would normally be doing this about two months ago. Um, but we will have our first look at the budget. Uh, I had a look at it last week. I think it is a, is, we're starting off at a very good point, but I don't want to say much more than that. So, um, so we'll uh, do a fulsome review over two or three sessions, and then we'll be preparing the budget package for Council. So Mr. Chair, uh, that's, that's my report, but I would like, this is my final chance to formally speak to Council. Uh, I do, usually there are a few uh, comments made at the final meeting of a council term, but I would just like to say on behalf of staff to extend my appreciation and thanks to the members for the 2018, 2014 to 2018 council for your guidance, your patience, and your support. Uh, we've made some significant accomplishments over the last four years. I won't list them all, but they are monumental. Uh, some of them were difficult, some of them were challenging, and some of them will have huge and significant positive impact on our community for many years to come. So with that, Mr. Chair, I would like to, again, on behalf of staff, say that it's been an honour and a privilege to serve. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bradley, and thank you to staff for the fine work they continue to do. I know it's, uh, it can be a little challenging at times, but uh, we all uh, pull together and make sure it gets done. So uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, the support. Um, any questions to Mr. Bradley? Mr. Uh, Councillor Pierce and Councillor Miller, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just quickly regarding the health hub there, you said you've had six meetings and ten more to come. As these meetings go on, do we get bigger and bigger? And How's that going? Is there, is there anything in the back of your mind at this point in time that's saying, hey, you know what, we could expand already? <laughs> Sir, and Mr. Chair, uh, through you, the, uh, the last report that I brought forward had a footprint of about 38,000 square yeah. feet. Yeah. So far, I think we're still there. Uh, everyone seems to be uh, consistent with their, their space needs. Um, the numbers, in terms of the financial numbers, are only improving a little bit um, each time I have a meeting. So generally, I think um, that's probably the, re the, the, uh, the recommendation I bring back, probably two or three months. It's probably going to be consistent with that 38,000 square foot uh, projections. Excellent. Thank you. And just to add to that, uh, Councillor Pierce, I know in our initial discussions and as the discussions went on, we've always had the impression and the idea to, if, if needed, we could always make it bigger. Is that correct, Mr. Bradley? Through, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I mean, we originally started at a 20 to 22,000 square foot facility. So our, I think we think the, the limits of that site is about 40,000 square feet um, unless we started to determine the future of our, of our community services building, which would free up some additional space. So, again, I think these things will work themselves out. But, but I, my suspicion is just in, the, in discussions that we're going to see a slightly less than 40,000 square foot facility. Thank you. Councillor Miller, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through to Michael, I appreciate your comments there because um, <laughs> sometimes when you're in the middle of something, you don't realize you're getting from here to there, and then suddenly you're there, and it's like, well, I, we got there somehow. So, not quite sure how we did it, but we did it. Um, I want to ask you there's a lot of angst out there um, regarding the um, trailer parks, and I'm just wondering maybe this, maybe you're not aware of when uh, we'll see a report on those things. Because, like I say, there's, there's a lot of angst out there, and uh, I'm quite anxious myself. That's Mr. Bradley, see it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I can say that staff have a meeting scheduled on Friday to discuss. We're well aware of the angst. I believe there is a delegation coming into December. Uh, staff will have, I think, a, 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 a well thought out approach for council by that point. So uh, the co county solicitor is on on that file, and uh, and we will we will have something. So. Um, we will certainly have something for you as those delegations start to, as when that delegation comes in okay um and i did speak with the county solicitor and uh yeah we, we i think <laughs> as a counselor i know i'm approaching differently from a staff person i just i asked her to be cognizant of where we're we're coming from as well so thank you very much and uh one, one comment i'd like to make about the uh, health hub it, sitting on the fht board as a citizen it's been quite an eye-opening experience to see 
what the doctors do provide to the community as family doctors, as well as the after hour clinics they put on besides the urgent care after hours. It's a lot of time and effort that's put in by these family health teams and uh, a lot of it goes unnoticed. Um, you know, the, the people think they're making these millions of dollars, they're not. They're general practitioners trying to earn a living as doctors and doing a very fine job of it as well in our communities. Uh, we're starting to see a lot more nurse practitioners, which I think is a great idea as well. Uh, they do a great service for doctors uh, who can't always see in every individual client. So uh, they add a great asset to our community as well. Uh, as Michael said, it is a growing project. It's something that I'm very proud of and being part of in the community. I will continue to do that as long as they ask me to be on the uh, committee. I'll be glad to do it. So thank you, Mr. Bradley, for your report. No communications, no matters referred by council. Mr. Mil uh, council Miller, other business, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, I snuck that in earlier in the meeting, so no, no, oh, okay. no further business. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, could I have a motion to go on camera, please? Councilor Coleman, Councilor Pierce, all in favor? Opposed, carried. Uh, two minutes will be in camera.